Well, hello there. Zach Million here. You're probably wondering why I brought you here tonight, and the answer is simple. I'm back, and I'm back to talk movies. So grab a buddy, make some popcorn with extra butter, you heathen. Sit back, buckle in, and enjoy as we plug ourselves into the Matrix. We fly with the eagles over Mount Doom because, damn it, they just might take our lives, but they will never take the Oneonta Movie Show. Welcome back to the IRC studio in Oneonta, New York, and I am hyped to be back. But for now, I'll have to rein it back because I'm not the only one going on this journey. Helping me steer the great OMS Enterprise is Chris Turnbull. Tell me what we got going on tonight, Chris. Hey guys, welcome to the Oneonta Movie Show. Uh, we're going to be discussing Train Spotting 2 tonight, and we have reviews coming up for Arrival, the new sci-fi movie by the director of Sicario and Prisoners. So we'll have that coming up for you later in the show. And sitting to Chris's right, he's been looking for that Mountain Dew sponsorship since he decided to copy my wear a particular shirt to filming idea. Long live Macho Monday. I just don't have the heart to tell him that we're already sponsored by 7up. That's not true. Oh my God. It's Mike Pappas. Not true. I'm the only one here sponsoring Mountain Dew. And where is my money? I need my money. Anyways, Mountain Dew. Go drink some Mountain Dew. Also with us is the man who will explain to me what Ewan McGregor did before Star Wars, because I just can't imagine a world without the Star Wars prequels. I give you Matt Berkland. Well, hello there, Zach. I thought of starting this off in a Scottish action to let you know that Ian McGregor was an excellent actor in this movie called Crane Sporting. He was doing very big, serious drugs, and he saw a baby crawl up on the ceiling and scream his he head off. Hope you're going to enjoy it tonight. Hit him with the hind. I still don't know what that means. And finally, <laughs> gracing us with his presence once again, a man with very little introduction needed because, well, I don't know too much about him. It's Austin. We are honored to have you back. Glad to be back. I'm happy. I, this show's amazing. And I'm glad you guys asked me again to be back. So, thanks. Woo! Yeah. All right. So, we all have a favorite cold classic, right? From our Rocky Port, uh, Horror Picture Shows to our Fight Clubs. Many movies can be considered cult classics, but it's very few and far between where we'll see a sequel for a cult classic. And recently, we saw the release of a trailer for T2, or as I'd like to call it, Train Spotting 2, Judgment Day. If you don't get that reference, I'm not sure why you're watching the show. But anyways, the movie that made Ewan McGregor a star, apparently, and has a lot to say about drug addiction, is getting a sequel. And I know one of our illustrious hosts here has a lot to say about this. Matt, tell the kids why it's so darn cool. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say the Only Eye Movie Show does not condone any of the actions in this movie whatsoever. And secondly, this <laughs> movie enough. is basically about um, drug addiction, uh, recovery, about this guy played by Ian McGregor who comes home in Scotland to spend time with his you boys. And Ewan McGregor, yeah. Ewan McGregor, thank you. Ewan. I thought I said. You're Ewan. saying Ian. Ewan. Ewan. Whatever. Ewan. <laughs> Ewan. his accent. All right, then. Anyways, um, Ian McGregor, he comes home, visits his... <laughs> <laughs> I did it again, didn't I? Yes, he did. Just go on. Go on. Just keep going. Ewan. Yeah. He went behind. All right, so he comes home <laughs> and spends time with his uh, family to... Or, well, his friends, because they all used to do drugs together and party all the time. And it's been like 20 years after all this has gone down. He's grown, he's learned, but I don't think his friends are in that same place he is right now. So it'll be interesting to see that uh, difference between the original and this new one coming out. Yeah, one of the things I'm a little concerned about is we have all these sequels coming out that are coming out like 10, 20 years later after the original. Right. And I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm sure the, actor, the actors will do a fine job. And right. it looks like very similar to the original. Yes. But what I'm worried about is story because... Uh, Ewan McGregor's story kind of ended in the first one. Like he had his complete character arc in that right. movie. So I'm, I'm very. I just I hope they don't do a redo of the first movie. Right. I think when did this movie come out? 1996. Yeah. 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 What happened at the end of that movie? Uh, Spoilers. So uh, Ray, Ray, uh, Ray, Ray basically, basically he screwed straight. over his friends and got some. Uh, took all the money that um, they were doing on a drug deal, ran off with it, 
Man. That's it. It ran off in the sunset. I think what this is trying to accomplish is I think he's been, uh, from the looks of things, he's cleaner. Like he's off. I was going to say, Hugh McGregor does not look like a heroin addict. Yeah, right. No. Yeah, no, but he he looks he looks really convincing as a heroin addict in the, the, first, in the first one. one. Yes, definitely. And like by like, the way he looked. Yeah. From the way he looks in this one, I think he's been off the drugs for quite some time, and now he's going to see like things differently. Probably catch up with his friends who might yeah. may or may not still be on the drugs. Probably mentor some and, people. Uh, yeah. yeah, like try to. Figure out is like, it? where he is. Yeah, I mean, you know, who, life. I'm high. interested to see how how they how it's going to go from there. Yeah. How that actual story goes from is there. Is it the same director and everything? Same. I yeah, yeah. I think is, yeah. I think Danny Boyle's still directing yep. it. So. Uh, number yeah. four. Fell out of time to make it. So. The original was the number one highest uh, box office success um, in the British uh, movie industry. Oh, uh, I mean, but I'm it's not, not considered not really a British movie, is it? Well, it is technically. It's, 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 part it's, of it's made by the UK, which is Scotland, um, where Scotland, England, where exactly? Scotland, England, England and Northern Ireland. Right. So, Scots, does it take place in Scotland? So, United yeah, it takes place, place in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Where does the second one take place? Do we know? It takes Edinburgh. Probably the same place. Edinburgh, Edinburgh I think, is the yeah, first yeah, one. yeah, Edinburgh. Uh, but yeah, it takes place in that city in Scotland. And yeah, I just hope they do well to the story and to the characters. That's right. what I'm most worried about. Because 20 years is a long time. But then again, after 30 years, we got Fury Road, which was amazing. So well, that's a good point. Can't so compare. It could be great. And it's the same writers and it's the same director. So yeah. Yeah. So I mean, Danny Boyle is a very talented yeah, guy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they I mean, got they know and, what and they got like most of the original cast yeah. in there yeah. too. Yeah, and he's a good actor too. So yeah. But again, we also got things like Dumb and Dumber Two, made by the same people. Oh, sorry, Dumb yeah, yeah, no, Dumb and Dumber Two. That was, was good. We don't That's want to even talk out of the question. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> as much as I'd love to sit back and talk British or Scottish cult classics all night, we have to review to get to a review. This is a good one. It's not one of them comic movies, but still. Stick around after this commercial break. After drinking alcohol, one in seven 16 to 24 year olds have had unprotected sex. While one in five have had sex they regretted. One in 10 has been unable to remember if there was sex the night before. Who's watching you when you're not watching yourself? So over the past week or so, I was seeing reviews for this movie, and I was astonished to see that the critic reviews before the movie even came out stayed at 100% score on Rotten Tomatoes from at least 60 reviewers, which is insane. Arrival, not THE Arrival, keep in mind, that's a completely different movie, directed by Denis Villeneuve came out to almost as incredible reviews, and as we're, as we're filming this right now on Monday, after its release, it stays at 93%. I thought this was an amazing film. So let's get right into our review for Arrival. Chris, what did you think? I mean, we've had, we've seen a bunch of sci-fi trailers in the past, and at first, there were, besides the very strange design of the alien ship, there wasn't anything that specifically, like, like showed out that was, there wasn't anything big about it that surprised me, at least by the trailers. Then I saw the reviews, and the reviews were incredibly positive, more positive than I ever could have thought possible. So then eventually I just went to go see the movie, and I frankly loved it. Make yeah. no mistake, it's a sci-fi movie, but it's not an action movie. No, yeah, no. I mean, I, you know, I didn't expect it to be that much of an action movie, too. I mean, uh, you know, and, I did, and what worked for me, too, is I didn't have, you know, too far expectations going in like I do with other movies. So it, it worked for me, and it, def and it definitely kept me, you know, enjoying it throughout the, throughout the movie. Yeah, it had its, most of its pros. I thought it was all right, but I felt it was kind of, it kind of dragged on with the story at the beginning. And then we got into, like, an M. Night Shyamalan style twist. I won't spoil it, but uh, there was like, it's like a mixture of contact and Man of Steel. Like, in my opinion. I don't okay. know. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. I think. Hold on. Wait a minute. Maybe on. it's just because Amy Adams. Hold on. 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 Okay. So, I don't understand the Man of Steel thing. I'll, I'll maybe ask you. Maybe it's because of Amy Adams. I'll ask you to elaborate in a second. But. She's Amy Adams. Just because Amy Adams. Well, no. It's also like the styling of the film. Like, the dark. Dark lighting, I guess, in the mo throughout the movie. Yeah, and all that. but I mean, at least it, 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 it worked showed, for the it film, loved, and it was, and it, it yeah, worked. It, it set the it tone for fit. the film right. with the tone. Whereas a Superman movie, you think would be lighter, bright, colorful, tone. optimistic. Yeah. yeah, and you got it. You got okay. So this is going to be spoiler free, just so you guys know. Too bad. Uh, without giving any spoilers, this movie turns out to be. 
pretty optimistic yeah. Right? Yeah. In, in the sense of... I'm not saying that. I'm just... These yeah. aliens are here, but it's not an invasion movie. Right. So it's, it's very much dialogue heavy. It's very much you got to be willing to sit yeah, there and think. Attention. I have right. heard uh, comparisons to Inception, which I personally disagree with only because I'm with I don't think one. Inception yeah. is as big Right, I think it's interesting and it makes you think, like but think. it's like, I don't think this is like a film for everyone. I think it's like for Oscar. Worthy. You just remind me, I was just rambling for a second because I forgot what I was actually going to say. Right. But you said an M. Night Shyamalan movie. An M. Night, an M. Night Shyamalan type twist. And yeah. I agree with that. But it's good M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, it's, it's like, right. like yeah. Sixth Sense. It's right. definitely Sixth Sense. Like, yeah. Sense. I figured it out like halfway through the film. I, honestly, course, I think I everyone did. I, I think you were right. supposed. No, I figured out in the first five minutes of the film. I think. Right. Yeah, no, I didn't know. Lily tells you the first five minutes. Honestly, if, I, happen, I, honestly, if right. I figured it out that early, or I saw it online before I saw the movie, it would have ruined it for me, like completely. Right. Well, me, so I, let's I, let's not get too much yeah. into the right. plot twist. I was because, debating yeah. in my head, saying maybe maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe I'm not. We won't get into that. I'm not going to talk about that. The plot twist is fully revealed. At a certain point in the movie, and from then on, it's uh, just up yeah. to you if whether or not you yeah. like it and you agree with it. And they it. could have done without, for, like, I understand, like, they needed a military, but I, I don't see much of a role for Forrest Wicker. It's just mainly Amy Adams. Uh, and yeah, Jeremy I think Forrest yeah. Wicker might have been a little bit of a waste of time. It was a little bit of, a, of an overkill, a little bit. Um, but I, I overall, I, I like the movie a lot. I thought it was a very different take on the regular I alien think for a sci-fi see. movie this is one of the most grounded in yeah. reality type movies yeah. especially I the, the, so. the cinematography I mean, in this well, well, is, was amazing yeah it like was, the opening shot sort of very like too real the fog she, going over the hills yeah amazing it was she, like a yeah. little too real though for me I was a movie like, too I, real I don't think so I think Interstellar had a nice balance between we're not talking about Interstellar we're talking about this movie no 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 I have no problem responding to that Interstellar, you think? That's, Interstellar was a weird. Comparison? No, I mean, I, Interstellar was hard to I follow. Think this yeah, is, no. is, at, least, well, at least you could oh, keep, a, this was too, you keep no. the pace going with the, with Arrival. Like we couldn't keep the pace going with Interstellar. We didn't know yeah, like what could. was going on. Yeah, but Arrival, you want to know oh, what's going to happen? Is it going to happen? Also, Arrival happens. Happen. Yeah, and you're waiting for like 45 it minutes. It. Like it's over shorter. Than yes, Interstellar. And I got a lot less math too. Yeah, when I got out of the theater, I was surprised how short it was. But then when I realized it, I'm like, it works for this movie. It doesn't need to be two and a half hours long. Yeah, I was surprised. No, I was only an hour and fifty minutes. I was surprised when I. It didn't even have to be over two hours. It could have been an hour and a half. hours. It was an hour and 50. Hour and 50. Hour and 50. Hour and 50. You guys actually counted the... All right. No, I mean, I saw... When I looked it up, you know, I did do my research before going in, you know. Right. I wanted to look at it. And I, I mean, saw, was, I think was. Amy Adams delivers a performance of a lifetime. Right, I'm not, yeah, saying, I'm not, yeah. not saying that. Easy, no, easy, easy one more time, time, boys. Chris? Speaking of Man of Steel, can we just see how different the directors influence their actors? Because if you look at Amy Adams and Man of Steel as like, um, name I'm forgetting. Lois Lane. Lois Lane, I don't know why. <laughs> wow. I don't know, I brain fart. Um, yeah. And you show, because they're very, they're both in academic roles. So right. they're kind of similar characters in a way, right. and it's right. interesting to see how much better one is than the other. I think, Amy and Adams, I think the ship looked a little bit like uh, General Zod's ship. I don't, I don't want to go point there, but like the ship was cool because you didn't, I you didn't know, know yeah, what I it was. Cool. It kind of it kind of was a reminiscent of I don't know if you guys ever know, saw maybe. this happens. This happens in the trailer, so this is not a spoiler. Yeah. So the way he shoots this movie is you see these ships. You don't even really see the ships until like a, a good rock. solid fifteen minutes like into rock. the movie, and. They're designed, and it, they explain it throughout the movie in a way where there's really no up or down or sideways or up front ways or back ways. Right. And when you get into the ship, he shoots it like it's upside down, and it in in that right in that moment you realize, okay, there really isn't up or down or or left and right in this particular ship. And I thought it was so interesting because. Not all alien species have to be yeah, that's right. no. menacing mm -hmm. giants. Yeah, no. no, I get yeah, that. It's like that. It was a, it was I'm a not different take about on the alien, like, like a peanut the a little physics bit. Physics, but I thought it was like one of, the, one of those cool rocks you see in the ocean. The yeah, the rock. right. Yeah, it kind of kind of like reminded like me. Rock. I don't know if you guys saw 2001: A Space Odyssey, like that yeah. that like but long like cube, long cube. I think it kind of reminded me of that. He definitely, I assume, was different. It was the first time we've seen it. Although much less abstract than 2001: A Space Odyssey. Well, yeah. I think I think this movie. Offers a lot. Uh, yeah. I'm very curious, uh, Mike. What did you think of Jeremy Renner? I think I think he plays a good straight man. Yep. I think 
he plays the character that a lot of us would imagine we'd be in that situation. Like he's kind of giddy about it, yeah. even though he's not he's not 100 percent sure. What do you think, Mike? I you know I am not too picky about his performance. I thought he did it. I thought he did a. I thought he did a good job. Yeah. I thought I you know he wasn't like horrible or terrible. I thought he I thought he acted you know I thought he did the part well. I mean I think the thing right. is like with Forrest Whitaker that Amy Adams just takes up so much of the spotlight that Forrest Whitaker and Jeremy Reiner don't get as much. They fall behind. Yeah, right. Yeah. She's definitely yeah. the main character. There was more yeah. character development all, all in her than. Although than Jeremy Reiner was, was definitely the the. The second one on the list. The oh, one right. Like the other one. Especially yeah. in, the, in the beginning when, when he insults, when he insults. Very, him, like very that. good moments of loving yeah, with him. Very funny. He's, he's, I, I noticed that no matter what movie he's in, his dialogue is a lot of the same, just because that's the kind of character he likes he to play. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's like, that's what he's good at playing. Kind of funny. Yeah. He's he's good. I, I liked I liked oh. him being a science dude as opposed to yeah. being the generic <laughs> military <laughs> guy. That was that was good. Austin, what'd you think of? I mean, any big things stand out for you? I liked all the actors' performances, especially I like in the part when I think the military guys I, with um, their their character that that you see that that without spoiling anything that that you see that how some are like what are what are what, what are they doing? Other ones are like just following orders. And I and a lot of the movies are just like background characters, but I thought that they flowed well with the movie, even though a lot of them didn't have a lot of dialogue. But yeah. you notice that like they they were good supporting. And especially, I like I, I like the uh, the technology that they put in it. I think that was very right. well thought out. I yeah, think yeah, the good. language that they create for that for the for the alien oh, race. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very very interesting. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. All right. So, so it's it's a big it's a big think piece. So I would suggest you all go see this movie. Figure it out for yourself. Obviously, Matt has his opinions. We all have our own, yeah. and that's fine. So Chris, go ahead. What'd yeah, um, great movie, great high sci-fi that's intelligent and doesn't belittle its audience in any way. I'd honestly give it nine tentacles out of ten. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I agree with everything you said. Great movie, great visuals, great story. I think the characters were great, too. Definitely nine out of ten Mountain Dew bottles. <laughs> you got to uh, tune it up every once in a while. Yeah, like I said, I, I had a few problems with it. Man. That's probably that because um, it's probably the situation, like when I saw it or whatever. I thought it was all. I thought it was pretty good overall. I think I'll give it like a nine out of ten. <laughs> okay. no I uh, I give it a nine out of ten C four bombs. That's what nice, clock right. yeah. bombs. And I think I'm gonna give it a good four peanut spaceships out of five. I think it deserves it. <laughs> okay. So in honor of Arrival coming out and having what we thought was a pretty sweet plot twist, you're going to want to stay tuned and check out our movie debate for tonight. Don't you go anywhere. My favorite class has to be Dad and Physiology. It's definitely interesting to learn about your body. I've learned so much about the human anatomy and it just applies to my everyday life, such as diet. It's honestly just an amazing course and you learn a lot about yourself that you wouldn't normally know. <laughs> I would say as of now, my favorite class would be Cognitive Science. Everything that has to do with memory and the mind. It's really interesting seeing the connections. Probably my favorite class is my Education 201. It's about diversity. It teaches me how to accommodate different kids with different backgrounds in my future classroom. And as a future educator, that's very helpful. My favorite class has been my costume rendering course. I definitely recommend it to any art um, major or someone that wants to have a drawing course. Uh, it helped me realize that I wanted to be a costume designer. Concert choir. I've taken it every semester and I love it. Definitely has increased my confidence in singing um, and just in general. Yes, I think it's a very fun class. You don't have to be the greatest singer in the world to be in it, um, but it teaches you a lot of great skills and it's a really good time. My favorite class I would have to say is one of the ALS classes on Jim Crow to Black Power because I didn't know anything about like racism and embedded racism in society. Africana and Latina study you can open up our minds to something different you know I feel like different is always good. I recommend this class to every single student that goes here. Cool. Every single student. And here we are the finale to episode five. What's gonna happen? Will there be a plot twist? Huh? <gasps> huh? Eh? Eh? Well, I say that because. No. We, no. Okay. <laughs> I say that because for tonight, the debate, 
is going to be what is the worst plot twist of all time. This doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a bit from a bad movie, but some plot twists instead make you go, <gasps> they just kind of make you go, oh. <laughs> so Chris, what's the worst plot twist of all time? You got 45 seconds and go. All right, so the movie I'm going to go with is Now You See Me. It's a movie about the, these group of magicians called the Four Horsemen who tr do all these magic acts that apparently like rob banks and their first one they rob a bank. So this FBI agent played by Mark Ruffalo is doing this cat and mouse thing, trying to catch them throughout the entire movie, sort of like uh, Catch Me If You Can sort of thing. Um, at the end, it is revealed that Mark Ruffalo, the person who leads the FBI, who is a bubbling idiot, who has been trying to catch these guys, has really been the leader of them the whole time. So it removes all sense of tension, it removes all the drama, and overall it's just a dumb plot twist because you're expecting this guy who's leading this magic or group to also be the head of the FBI. There's so much... There's so much disbelief there that it's impossible for your audiences to take it seriously, and that's Ty. why I think it's the worst. Mm. I probably should have said before we started, spoilers. Um, that's expected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, and go. So my movie that I think is the worst plot twist of all time is Return of the Jedi, where the scene where Luke <laughs> finds out that Leia is his sister. I mean, out of all the whole time, you have, you, there's like this tension of maybe Luke and Leia are like, are going to be a relationship. And then they, even in Empire Strikes Back, she even kisses Luke, mm -hmm. like tongue kissing. And then, and then, and then in Return of the Jedi, she, when Luke says that Leia is, when Luke tells Leia that he's, his, that she's his sister, he, she goes, I'm, I know, I've known the whole time. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> even when you kiss them? Like, oh God, incense. Ah, oh, God, kill me. Okay. See, that's what I meant by, it could be a good movie, <laughs> but with a very strange plot twist. Matt, All right. ready? Okay. Go. Planet of the Apes. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is not the one with Charlton Heston where he sees the Statue of Liberty. He goes, you maniacs! Bleep you all the You know. Yeah. But <laughs> this is, I'm talking about the one from 2001. One, one, yeah. 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 2001. Where... Uh, Tim Burton was directing. Mark Wahlberg lands in D.C. He, the first thing he sees is Abra Abraham Lincoln. <sighs> That's how you do it. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, this, this was probably one of the worst plot twists because everyone saw it, not only because everyone saw it done in, or saw it coming, but it was just re, it was changed so much that it, it didn't need it. It was unnecessary changing. All right. Three really good picks so far. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> Can you follow up? Ready? Yeah. Go. Since you picked all the good ones, I had to go with Cabin in the Woods, the 2011 <laughs> movie that has a 93 of Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. But I watch it in the theaters and I get really upset. So the movie's about all these teenagers that go to the cabin in the woods and strange stuff starts happening. Zombies and all these monsters start to kill each teenager one by one. And then throughout the movie, you find out that it's people underground in the government and they are sending these monsters. So you think throughout the whole movie it's for like a TV show or the government just messing with people. No. You find out the reason why they're killing people is to get to the virgin. Out of all the teenagers, there's one virgin. And, it kill, and, and what they do is they have everybody else die but the virgin so they can sacrifice the virgin to the gods. Stop. Okay. <laughs> These are all very interesting choices. Some I agree with. Some I couldn't care less about. But that's not for me to decide. For me to decide is who's going to argue it best. Go ahead. Firstly, so it, how hey, anyways, Chris first. what is it? How dare so, you spoil a great movie, firstly. They, Secondly, the point of that movie is it's a satire. It's taking these tropes from all these different horror movies and doing a satirical take on it. It's I didn't think it was funny at all. They do. They it's explain funny, it to you it's right at the movie. beginning. How can you be? And uh, also quick. with Abraham Lincoln, I thought that was Dude, hilarious. That was dumb. Don't blast me. Do not even start. It was hilarious. Do not even start. You expect that from a Tim Burton too. You expect that from a Tim Burton. Besides, because of how he is as a director and how he doesn't even how he does the visuals in his movies. Let him respond. All right. Let me explain this. Leia and Luke being brother and sister, that probably helps bring the story along because you want to see Han and Leia get together. Yeah, that's so, so you, I want to so hear your you point. of incense, I see. What? It's your incense proof of incense. No. Incense is hilarious. You mean incest. You, you put in your you room you to light. Like, I you you light. Well, you know what I'm getting at. I don't yeah. get I it. I don't approve I don't of that. I'm just saying. 
It's <laughs> like you gotta you don't they don't know this because they were separated at birth to prevent Vader from fighting them. They don't know this. Lance okay. she knew the whole okay. time. No, well, she did it. Before, before the kiss, she, 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 she knew she said she knew. I don't think Even that's it, true. Before the kiss, she, she knew. Hey guys, I'm not hearing Vader a lot before. on now, you see me. Okay. Let me get to that. First right. <laughs> the the level of a bad plot twist is how much it affects its plot. Your movie does not affect the plot very much at all. I, Your movie, uh, it's, a, it's a weak plot twist, not comparable to the original, but doesn't affect anything. Right. And yours is a legitimately good yours movie. Yours doesn't even affect also, no, your it does. Ruffalo and what? him it being the leader of the organization of it does the FBI. Though. It ruins all the tension. It ruins all the drama throughout the entire movie. Because you realize for my, uh, for my, my, for but, my characters, it affects the characters and how you see them. Because it's like, well, you saw Leia kiss Luke in the other in the other movie, and Empire Strikes Back. It's like, what? Well, Does everyone really think negatively of those characters? I, 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 I know what they saw time. Time. I mean, you, you gotta someone think of took it a somehow. giant writing dump on it and made it into uh, this piece of garbage. And you guys, your your plot twists aren't even. Yeah, I don't think you're Mark Rose that, that bad. Yeah. That's not that bad. That's yeah, that yeah, bad. Yeah, like, frankly, I, honestly, I don't think it's that honestly, bad. Honestly, it would have been better than mine. It's, it's like that plot twist is way better than mine. Dude, you're, you're it's way better than anybody else's. Is. Oh, you actually find out that the leader is actually Yours the other is leader. very interesting. So this you is watched the movie already. Like, you, you fell for it. You, you fell for exactly. it. You no, fell but that for it. That would disappoint me. You're just mad that you didn't see it. You're mad that you're upset. No, but at least you kind of don't see it coming. But like I said, you kind of don't see it coming. It just a Mark Because then you realize that all these magicians they didn't they weren't in any danger at all through the entire movie because the guy chasing them didn't really want to catch but them but the movie's all. over already when you find out the movie's yeah, pretty it was much a sequel, over so it was an interesting twist did you see the sequel yes and it was crap <laughs> <laughs> I can't get that well, sequel so I cannot oh, say exactly anything, but I think Yours, eight, that's cool. I don't know what. Cause so, sorry they, for the It is cool. cool. It is cool because they couldn't be. The original was cool. This one was just. It's the yeah. same movie. It's they, not the same movie. It's 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 the same It's a remake of the same movie. It's 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 the same Stop. Chris, you got 20 seconds. All right. Final closing argument. Go. All right, you have this decent cat and mouse game going between the four horsemen magicians and the FBI throughout the entire movie. At the end, you realize that was all false, and there was no danger or tension or drama throughout the entire movie, and it just feels like a massive disappointment and a waste of time. Okay, Mike, go. How can you not look at Le Luke and Leia the same way after <laughs> she kisses him and Empire Strikes Back, and then she has the gall to say she knows? Like, you knew you wanted to kiss your brother? God, that, that kind of ruined it. Matt? All right. Planet of the Apes was an excellent film. The masterpiece of cinematic, uh, cinematic, the cinematic uh, world. No way. Planet of the Apes remakes, uh, Tim Burton style, is a piece of garbage. And this ending with Abraham Lincoln was just terrible. The New York, the, the original with the Statue of Liberty. Time. Yeah. It's over for you. Austin? Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods was a great movie until the end. If they wanted to sacrifice a virgin, then just go out and go get a virgin and kill them. There's no point in playing this stupid game of trying to find a virgin with a bunch of these teenagers. They could have just found a virgin and killed them. That's it. Okay. So after hearing all <laughs> of those very interesting arguments, I have a very interesting winner to declare. Ooh. I think this guy not only defended his movie the best, but I think he knocked down the rest of you guys just a little bit better. And the winner is Mike. So, <laughs> good reaction. All right. <laughs> But that's all the time we have for tonight. Yeah, give them a right. Yeah, all right. I guess so. That's all the time we have for tonight. And the moral of our story for tonight, look both ways before you cross the road. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>